Welcome to another edition of From the Preacher's Study. My name is Kevin Clark, and I, along with my friend and colleague, the preacher here at the Oak Mountain Church of Christ, Bob Hutto, I have the pleasure of uh, delivering this podcast to you. Uh, we're very, very thankful to have the opportunity to delve into the Sermon on the Mount, uh, some of the greatest teaching that has ever been done, certainly by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And specifically, we've been looking at how to pray. Uh, we've made the point that if we're to be close to God and be effective servants in His kingdom, we're going to have to be prayerful people, uh, ones who communicate with God on a regular basis. Think about First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Uh, Jesus, Luke 18, uh, with the parable of the unjust judge, talked about men ought to pray always. And so this is a very important aspect of our service to God in our life <clears throat> to Him is to pray. And so we're trying to learn some things from the way that Jesus structured this prayer for his own disciples. He said, in this manner, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray. And we've been looking at different elements to see what we can learn from those elements and how we can incorporate those elements into our own prayer life. And so very thankful for this opportunity. Thank you for the audience. And I hope that you'll continue to be with us and spread the word because if you like what we're doing here, if you support the teaching of the Bible, uh, that is not always done everywhere. And so we need to promote that and, and invite your friends to participate. We're talking about 15 or 20 minutes a day. It's not that much to sacrifice, and hopefully everybody will agree at the end that they've been well uh, blessed and benefited by that. Brother, any introductory comments? Well, prayer is a great blessing. Just imagine the the very opportunity to to speak with the sovereign of the universe, you yeah. know, the creator of the world, our creator, but the creator of all things. And just the just to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. it, it may be that in your life you've had the opportunity to speak with someone who's very accomplished right. or had high right. ranking in some way, and right. and you're a little bit nervous yeah. about it. And and uh, but but you think I, I want to take advantage of that opportunity to speak right. to that person. Well, here we are able to come to the throne of God and speak to God, and He will listen to us. He's interested in what we have to say in our requests. Hebrews 14, verse 6 says, mm -hmm. or Hebrews 4, verse 16 says, Let us draw near with confidence mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We, we can even come before God's throne with confidence. Right. And so it's just a wonderful opportunity. And, uh, you know, we are learning. We hope, hope that we're learning how to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that we can, you know, prayer helps us, you know. So we, we're trying to learn how we can get the most out of it and use it the most effectively. Amen. <clears throat> we want to also uh, take a moment just to thank our two deacons uh, here at the Oak Mountain Church of Christ. That's Jason Reed and Mark Townsend. Again, they're always here to help us put this program on and to get this technology in use so that we can spread the word, not only in this place and this nation, but really across the world. We know so many of you are uh, tuning in from other places outside the United States. We thank you for that and, and appreciate uh, your audience. Well, let's get into what we've been talking about the prayer. We're going to look at one phrase in this particular podcast, and that's found in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. But for context, we'll start in verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then verse 11, the verse we're going to focus in on, give us this day our daily bread. And so, We've got a transition in the prayer mm -hmm. uh, from addressing God as Father, which connotes a relationship, a personal relationship that we have with God. Hallowed be your name, talking about how glorious and reverent his name should be. Uh, we talked about his will, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth, the administration of God uh, be done on earth. And we talked about the different ways that is done, most notably through his anointed Jesus Christ. Uh, but now we've shifted to something a little more personal and, and, and a request give us this day our daily bread. And what's interesting about that request, first of all, is it may seem odd for a man to make that request of God. Maybe we haven't thought about bread, and I take it by bread. That's a connotation for food as a whole. It's not mm -hmm. limited to bread, but our food. Why would we ask God to give us our daily bread? Well, let's think about some things along those lines. First of all, the importance of food to the body. Food is necessary. It's fuel for the body. If you go too long without that fuel, we know what happens. Uh, you know, you dealt sometimes with elderly people who have some illnesses and uh, they stop eating. And, and we're always told that's a dangerous time because if you don't get that nutrition, if you don't get those nutrients in, the body's going to shut down. And so we're asking God for our daily bread, that which is necessary to sustain us, that was necessary for us to have existence. But I like a couple things about this. One, he says, give us this day our daily bread. So he's not asking for an allotment of bread for a week 
or for months or for years or henceforth forevermore, but on a daily basis, just the allotment that is given to me, Lord, give that to me. And that's a concept that we find all throughout the scriptures. First of all, that God is the source of the food that we have. But the idea of asking God for our daily allotment, I couldn't help but think about Proverbs chapter 30 and beginning with verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7. Two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Now listen to this. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Now in this context, he says, Look, I, there are two excesses I want to avoid. I want to avoid the excess of having too much to where I'm tempted to forget about God and think that I'm a self-made man and deny God, but also don't want to be on the other end of the spectrum where I'm completely poor and I'm tempted to steal. He says, you know, feed me, I like this, with the food allotted to me. It, to me, it's another way of saying, give us this day our mm. daily bread, the food that we need for this day. We're not going to be presumptuous, as James 4 teaches against, that we think that we're going to be here for weeks on end and months on end and years on end. All we know is we have this day, and Lord, we're asking for you for the sustenance that we need for this day. Right. Any thoughts on that? Well, it shows our dependence on God as well, doesn't it? Right. That we recognize that what we have comes from Him, that mm -hmm. He blesses us with you know the daily necessities and right. if we have more then then more absolutely uh, matthew 6 and verse 33 mm -hmm. seek first his kingdom and his righteousness all these things will be added to you right. or what things right. verse 31 don't worry then saying what shall what shall we eat mm -hmm. or what shall we drink or what will we wear for clothing you trust in god That's you right. seek his kingdom you seek his seek his rule right let him have control mm -hmm. and dominion over your life, mm -hmm. and he'll take care of you, That's and right. he'll he'll provide for you. Absolutely. And so, uh, it's just that idea. We we depend on him for what we have. It's an acknowledgement of that, and he's generous and kind, and uh, he gives he gives us. He provides for us. Amen. I thought about uh, the idea of putting God first. You know, David said in Psalm thirty-seven twenty-five, "I've been young and now I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken." nor his descendants begging bread. And so the idea, again, if we're putting God first and we are looking out for his will, these things, God knows that we need them. The, the point is not we don't need food. We do. Yeah. But God will take care of that. And it's not that we're not concerned about food, but we're more concerned about doing what's right by the will of God. I and mean, that's our food. That's our bread, as Jesus teaches yeah. us in Matthew chapter 4. You know, this idea of God giving us food is found throughout the scriptures. Uh, one uh, example that I thought about in Acts chapter 14 uh, after uh, Paul has healed a lame man. And, of course, the people in Lystra, they overreact and start calling them gods. And in verse 14, uh, Barnabas kind of pushing back against that. Paul and Barnabas pushing back against that. Say, but when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things, the idols, to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations, now these are statements about God, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. So the Apostle Paul, in trying to pull these people away from these idols, from Greek mythology, and, and come back to the living God, says, let me tell you some things about this God. And one of the things he says that God does is he moisturizes the earth with rain from heaven, and that makes it fruitful, and that allows us to produce food or get food, and he fills our hearts with food and gladness. And so Paul acknowledges, you know, the food that we eat ultimately comes from the hand of God. And of course, uh, that's not the only time Paul acknowledged that. You may remember when he was on that fateful voyage to Rome uh, that ended in shipwreck. Before they get to that point, there's a period of time where the seas are so rough and the weather's so bad, nobody is eating. And uh, Paul breaks through that in verse 33 of Acts 27. As day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, today is the 14th day, it's two weeks. You have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. A couple of things. He's urging them, hey, you've gone two weeks without food. You need this food. It's nourishment. It provides the nutrition, the fuel that we need. 
quit doing that. Everything's going to be fine. Trust in God. And then he turns right around and demonstrates for them. He takes the food and he gives thanks. Why is he giving thanks? The same point he made in Acts 14. God ultimately is the one who gives us the food that we need for our body. So he publicly shows that he appreciates what God provides for us, the daily necessities that we need to serve him, but also just to survive. Uh, James chapter 1, in a general sort of Mm -hmm. way, Verse 17, every good thing and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the mm-hmm. Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. And so God God gives us everything yeah. that we need. Every good gift is from Him, whether it's food or clothing or right. shelter. It's all God's gift to us, His provision for us. And we are like Paul. You know, we're thankful Amen. for it. Amen. I thought about, I've thought about this a lot. I came across the idea somewhere. If we're praying for daily bread, give us this day our daily bread, how often are we praying? Every day. We're praying every day. Right, we're praying right. every day. So that right. sort yeah. of implied in yes. that statement I is do like that. Yeah. you need to pray regularly. Right. You, you right. pray every I day and that. you're thankful from day to day for your daily provision. That's right. One other concept I wanted to bring out in case some people may think, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I thanking God for bread and food and necessities? Because I live by the sweat of my own brow. I do my own thing. I have the ability to go out here and work and I earn this great income and I provide all these things for myself. Well, that attitude reminds me of uh, something that uh, Moses warned the children of Israel about in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And he was thinking about them going into the land of Canaan and the wondrous blessings that they were going to get for this. And God anticipated that there might be some people like the person that I just talked about that may think, you know what, I did all this. And so he says in Deuteronomy 8 verse 11, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water who brought water for you out of the flinty rock who fed you there you go in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and they might test you to do you good in the end then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Listen to what God says about them, verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for is he who gives you power to get wealth, that, you, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And so God says, oh yeah, these abilities that you have to generate wealth, to generate income, guess who gave you those abilities? Right. I did. Don't forget me. And so for the person who says, well, why are we praying for our daily bread? We're praying because God is the one who gives us the ability to consume these things or to generate income. In fact, even when, you know, Paul over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 makes a great point where he talks about, you know, if a man's not going to work, then he should not eat. Uh, Still, the ability to work, to generate the income, to buy the food that we eat, where does that come from? God says in Deuteronomy 8, it comes from me. So... I think that one of the important things we get from that is this, that when God gives us things, many times there are conditions to those gifts. And just because we fulfill those conditions, just because we exercise those conditions, we have not done that ourselves. Mm -hmm. God is still the giver of those things. And we see that principle all replete throughout the scriptures, even going to something as fundamental as salvation. God has saved us, but there are certain conditions. And when you satisfy those conditions, you don't puff out your chest and say, well, I saved myself. No, God saved you, but you had conditions. You had enough sense to satisfy those, and God's going to keep his in the bargain. So why is it that even though we work, and our work gives us the ability to provide for ourselves and our family. Why do we still give God the credit, the glory, and honor? Because ultimately, all of that comes from Him. And as you said, there's humility in prayer. It recognizes we did not do this. We right. didn't create ourselves. We don't sustain ourselves. We don't nourish ourselves. Ultimately, we are here at the pleasure of God, and we're so very thankful for that. So, yeah, it is appropriate for us to say, give us this day our daily bread. Right. The passage that you looked at in in Deuteronomy chapter 8 just reminds me that, you know, our our problem is not, our our problem is not persecution. We don't, Mm -hmm. we're not afraid uh, to to worship God in public. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are not afraid that somebody's going to break into our house, you know, and carry us off to prison because we're Christians. That's not our fear. And so that kind of persecution Mm -hmm. is not a problem for us. Our, Our problem is prosperity. Absolutely right. We can't. You know, we do. We don't deal with prosperity Absolutely very well. Right. So Deuteronomy chapter eight deals with that. Right. You know, when you get into the land yep. and you're prosperous, yep. you're going to forget yep. me. Yep. You be sure that you don't. Right. And so that may be our problem more than 
fear of persecution, just right. the problem of prosperity. That's exactly and right. As we pray from day to day, right. In a serious way, we're not just reciting, right? You know, for, formula, right, or form prayers or that kind of thing. But we're praying in a serious, significant, meaningful way, and we express our dependence on God. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm-hmm. That's going to guard us against becoming forgetful because we have so much. That's a great point. And as you're saying, when it says daily bread, the connotation is you're doing this every day. And so every day you have a constant reminder of what God has done for us and is doing for us. And that is a great antidote to the pride that we see demonstrated in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And so often in our own culture where people take credit for what they've done. We need God for the most basic of necessities of life. There's nothing in life we can say, ah, we don't need God, we got this. No. It's such a simple prayer, isn't it? It is. Just give us this day our daily bread. Absolutely. And as you said, you know, it... I would think it just stands for all daily necessities, right, whether right. it's bread or other necessities. Right. Give me the things that I need to uh, to support my life and, and manage the day. That's all I'm asking. Right. It's such a simple, straightforward thing, but we can make that request because God is our Father. He loves us. We are His loving children. And we have confidence that when we ask, he's going to hear us and respond. You know, and I know we're out of time. I'll make this last point and try to bring it to a close. But I know one thing you've said several times is, you know, don't ever think that any request we have for God, because he's so high and so holy and so mighty, is just too small and too insignificant and too inconsequential for him to take notice of. Well, think about this. This is an individual asking for his daily allotment of bread. Right. And yet Jesus says, you pray for that. The most, hum- is, the yeah. most humble, humble servant, exactly. the lowest servant. Right. Uh, the mo- doing the most menial task right. in obscurity, yeah. and yet God hears his da- right. daily request for, wonderful, for food. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. thing. Well, we'll have to bring this to a close. Appreciate your uh, rapt attention to this, and as we said, please get the word out there so we have more people that are sitting at the feet of the word, and that's what we're doing is teaching the word. As always, we want to end our podcast with a prayer, and so I ask Brother Bob Hutt to lead us in that sure. prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful that you've made this Uh, opportunity available to us that we have the opportunity to come before you in prayer that you will hear us it's uh, we we, we're in awe of that of that fact that you the creator of the entire universe will listen to us and to our our humble needs father help us to understand more and more how dependent we are on you but how fortunate we are that you are a loving father how blessed we are that you are our loving father that you will hear us and you will respond to us in the best way possible. Father, we pray in all things that your will will be done. We trust in you that your will will be best for us as as you see fit. We have confidence in you that your will uh, will be the best for us. And so, Father, we pray that your will will be done. Give us, Father, day by day the things that we need. Uh, Give us the daily sustenance that that we need. Give us our daily bread, the clothing we need, the shelter that that we need. And Father, as we depend upon you and as we're faithful to you, we seek your guidance, your will, your rule, your kingdom first. We pray that you'll provide the things we need day by day. Father, if we have more than we need, if we have an abundance of, of material possessions, help us, Father, to see opportunities to share them with others, to share these things with those who are less fortunate, uh, to give them what they need in order to get through life uh, successfully. And so, Father, we trust in you that you'll take care of us. And, Father, help us to see the needs of others that we might uh, help uh, relieve their needs. We're thankful, Father, for all the spiritual blessings that you bestow upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for this avenue of prayer. We're thankful for the fellowship that we have with you and the fellowship that we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ in this life. We pray, Father, that our relationships will grow and grow and mature, that we'll become more and more like your Son, Jesus, in our own lives. Father, we pray for uh, that home in heaven with you after this life is over. Help us to live in such a way so that that home will be ours. We pray this in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen.